say probably even the capital C most conservative minded commentator would say there does seem to be a degree of confusion over exactly where they are in the aftermath of the mini budget. So it's good to have one of the senior members on to tell us more. Uh, Trade Minister Greg Hans joins me now. I wonder if you could uh, answer, Minister, uh, the policy regarding corporation tax, which we heard uh, earlier this month will stay at 19 or last month, 19 percent. Is that going to stay? Is it going to change or don't you know? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, uh, Look, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are absolutely determined to stick to the growth plan, um, to stick to the changes they outlined. There are absolutely no plans to change anything, except for the fact that there is going to be a medium-term fiscal plan. The government's going to be laying out uh, all of the proposals as to how to um, uh, balance the books as to how to uh, move forward in the medium term, reduce uh, debt as a percentage of our overall GDP. That is what we've got coming up on the 31st of October. So we won't have long to wait to see how uh, this is all going to play out over the coming years. So just to clarify, there will not be uh, any move on corporation tax. Look, uh, the government is determined no, no, to, it, it, to move respectfully, ahead. Minister, it's a yes, no, or I don't know. Will there be a change in corporation tax? Look, there's no change okay, uh, to plans good. in corporation tax. Thank you. Why, as I understand we speak, is the Chancellor in midair over the Atlantic having gone to Washington and immediately having to, to remit his own personal U-turn? Uh, well, it, uh, it's not. He has been there for two days so far, Nick. I've been a government minister most of the last uh, eleven years, um, and it's not unusual to come back as a government minister a day early. He's already been there for two days. There's really important discussions with world finance leaders, finance ministers from across the world, uh, the IMF itself, bank of central bank governors. That's what the the annual meeting of the IMF is all about, and they've been discussing uh, the turmoil in global markets. Now, there are some UK-specific elements to that, but let's not forget there's global turmoil going on. Uh, The Bank of Japan has been intervening. The Federal Reserve has been uh, increasing interest rates very, very sharply. Uh, There's big energy problems and energy price problems and supply problems in Europe. You know, there's a lot going on in the world A lot of it driven, of course, by Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. So this is uh, the right thing for the Chancellor to have been at uh, for two days in Washington discussing these problems. But equally, it's not unusual to fly back a day earlier, particularly as we've got the medium term fiscal plan coming up in just two weeks. Okay, that might not be unusual. And reminding my listeners, by the way, you, of course, initially were a supporter of Mr Sunak, but we we know what uh, we have his history has served us. This is a mini budget that you have to admit spooked the markets, had the Bank of England lining up scores of billions of pounds to prop up the pension market, sent the pound crashing, had mortgage products taken away, and indeed a lot of people actually had mortgage offers withdrawn. How calamitous do you think the mini-budget was? Well, look, I think the the, the value of the pound has largely recovered. Um, Most of that is driven by the strength of the dollar, by the way. The euro, uh, for example, is down as this year as much as the pound is against the dollar. We do recognise that there have been increases in mortgage rates. Um, Mortgage rates, of course, today are still uh, lower than they were um, throughout the 80s, 90s, the noughties and so on, but still they have gone up. Uh, We do think there are significant numbers of mortgage products out there, hundreds of mortgage products available. Uh, But we do recognise that there has been an increase in rates and that will uh, cause um, more difficulties for people at a difficult time um, with the rise in prices. But equally, the government has taken really decisive action on energy prices, uh, really decisive action on reversing the rise in national insurance to put more money back into people's pockets, about an extra £340 um, for around about 28 million people across this country through the tax changes uh, on national insurance and the base rate uh, change due to come. So the government has taken really decisive action to help support people and make sure they've got more money in their pockets, uh, giving back, in the case of the tax change, more of their own money that they've paid into the government giving that back. So there has been a lot of government action in the last few weeks. Everything in the mini-budget seemed to be predicated on growth. When will we see that growth? Reminding my listeners, the last figures of GDP was down, minus 0.3. That was a one-month figure, Nick, and you'll know that uh, growth is better seen over the long term. The UK last year and this year has got the strongest growth of any G7 country. 
Uh, we need to make sure. But that's still not we want to see the economy growing by more than the rate it's been growing. Uh, so the last when will we years, see that, Minister? Well, that's uh, what the growth plan is all about, uh, launched a couple of weeks ago. The medium term fiscal plan in just a couple of weeks time uh, will also see how that uh, growth uh, will pan out. Uh, but that's why over the course of this autumn, the government, Nick, will be launching a series of uh, measures, a series of initiatives across gif different government departments to try and boost growth the, and move Britain forward. Th this medium term fiscal plan, is it just another word for mini budget? No, it's a uh, more on the uh, sort of the spending side, uh, the overall uh, government finances with all scored uh, by the Office for Budget Responsibility, ah, right. uh, which twice a year produce their own, uh, if you like, scorecard commentary on government finances. Um, and that is what the government is preparing at the moment. The Office of Budget Responsibility is preparing at the moment. And again, that's one of the reasons why uh, the Chancellor came back one day early from a three-day visit to Washington. Last couple of stories. One newspaper today, the Daily Mail, says the Prime Minister has 17 days to save her job. Is that headline correct? No, it's not. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, has got uh, my confidence. Uh, we do need the Conservative Party uh, to be more united. Every government always wants their party uh, to be uh, more united. There's no different uh, in that sense uh, um, so from uh, previous governments. Um, but the, uh, the medium-term fiscal plan will lay out uh, how the government will get bring down debt, particularly as a percentage of GDP. So you know, how much is the country overall producing? Make sure that our debt remains manageable. We've got You're the second lowest debt rate in the G7. We need to make sure that we continue to have a grip on debt. You're not one of the senior Tories, quotes, lining up Sunak and Mordant ticket. Well, I, I saw that um, uh, headline in The Times. I don't recognise that at all, Nick, um, okay. to be frank. Um, I spoke to Penny Mordaunt uh, yesterday. I don't think uh, this is something that she is promoting. I'm as good as certain it's not something right. that Rishi Sunak is promoting. Uh, I don't know where that story comes from. I, I don't recognise that. OK, last couple of questions. Moving to your trade brief. As a trade minister, and I think you'll know why I'm asking this question, should Queen or Queen Consort Camilla wear the Koh i Noor diamond on her crown next year? Uh, well, look, uh, Nick, that, that is a, a, a very interesting question. But I'm glad uh, I'm you find it interesting. A... I'm, I'm, I hope you have an interesting answer, Minister. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't, oh, because you know, on, that Greg. is a matter for, um, the, for Buckingham Palace and for those uh, making the arrangements uh, for the coronation. I think all of us are really looking forward to the coronation. <laughs> we're, we're all, but we you also know. need to look forward to a trade deal with India, which we wouldn't want to scupper by arousing se historical <clears> sensitivities, <throat> Minister. Well, look, I haven't heard this uh, crop up in any of the discussions uh, with India uh, on the trade deal. We have excellent discussions uh, with India. We've got a fantastic relationship uh, with India, not just across trade, but across a, a whole host of other areas. Uh, right. But I think the precise arrangements uh, for the coronation is something best left to the palace. It's something for us to look forward to, Nick. Indeed. You and I, I have, have never seen a coronation. I yeah? have never seen a coronation. Whether I'll live to see another one, I don't know, but I'm certainly going to live to see this one. Lastly, in the next hour, Ed Miliband, you might remember him, is going to be telling me that Labour would propose a motion to ban fracking for good. You served as energy minister. It would be interesting to get your reaction to that, Mr Hans. Well, uh, look, I mean, you know, Ed Miliband, uh, I like Ed, but he's got a lot to answer for. You know, he was energy secretary in the last Labour government that produced no nuclear Mr. power Mr Hans, some might say you, you and your colleagues have got a lot to answer for, by the way. But anyway, do go on with that assertion over uh, Mr Miliband. I think on fracking, the government has set out its position. Um, the business secretary recently, uh, I know the business secretary is speaking to MPs. Um, there is a debate on fracking, but the government has been uh, clear that these things would only move forward uh, with the local agreement, with local consent. Uh, and that is the right way forward, um, right. is to make sure that uh, people are on side. Uh, if when it came to fracking. But I, I don't see there being uh, any reason to change uh, government policy.